Hi, I'm Clay Allison from Wicked Edge. Recently a customer sent us in this knife by John Graham to see if our machine could sharpen it. It's a razel style blade. I believe the model is a SSLE model uh, with a micarta handle. It's made of S30B steel. It's a really unique and interesting blade. I've had a little bit of time to play with it and the ergonomics and the design and I can definitely see myself picking one of these up down the road for my collection. There's a lot about this knife that I like and it's, it's obviously very well made. Um, it's just a great fit in the handle. Even the sheath is just an excellent quality. So this knife has a couple challenges for sharpening and one of the reasons our customer contacted us was to see if we would have any trouble with these different geometries. This chisel point here and then these two opposing curves. We've got an inside curve with a big radius here and an outside curve with a pretty big radius too and then this odd chisel point. Um, and looking at it, these corners, all the vert vertexes need to stay really nice and crisp. So that would be one of the challenges that we really look at in the sharpening process is how can we sharpen each of these edges and keep the transition zone really crisp. So, um, but thankfully with the Wicked Edge it's, it's pretty easy to do. When we first got this knife uh, yesterday afternoon, it had a huge gouge out of the chisel portion, which was easy to fix, and I'll show you how I did that first. So I'm going to mount the knife in the clamp with the blade side down and the chisel side up. And because this side is sharp right here, I don't want it to get scratched up or dinged up on the inside of the clamp. So I'm just going to wrap it with a small square of chamois cloth, and then I'm going to slide it into the clamp just like this edge down and just set it in there until it drops and snug up the top with this key and then snug up the bottom even more firmly and now that the blade is really very firmly clamped and uh, so the first step is going to be setting the angle to 24 degrees when I was experimenting with it yesterday I, I used a little marker trick where I color in the bevel like this and then I see how much marker is coming off when I brush the stones across it and adjust. And 24 degrees was a, a pretty good fit for all, actually all the edges on the knife. So now that the knife is clamped and the angles are set here on the bottom to 24 degrees, just like that, I simply slide the stones onto the rod and go to work in alternating strokes. Just like that. And it's really easy to maintain the angle and a nice steady contact throughout the stroke and sharpen that up. Uh, removing the gouge really just took a matter of, uh, of minutes to regrind the bevels really quickly and then, uh, and then polish them back out. So I, what I've got on here right now are some strops with some diamond paste because uh, I'm just finishing the work that I did on it yesterday. All in all the whole process took about seven minutes yesterday. Alright, so now I'm going to switch grits on the straps and just continue to polish it. And that's, that's really it. It's very simple to do the chisel portion of the blade. I'm just going to wipe it off. You might be able to see the, the mirror polish there on the bevel. It just came out looking great here. and it's extremely sharp. Okay, so for the next portion of the blade, I just take it out of the clamp, pull my little piece of chamois out, and then I, I take the depth key and I put it into the top set of holes, set the knife firmly on top of the depth key, with the blade up, and just snug it up, and it's ready to go. So, when I want to preserve, particularly this little vertex here, what I've got to think about is that the stone is going to travel in one plane here, and I want to avoid allowing it to rock over and round that portion off. So as long as I just hold my stone flat and treat this section first, it's very easy. And I can just go to the alternating strokes just like this. And then when I go to the front portion, again, I just set the stone on and keep it in that plane throughout the stroke. 
being careful not to roll back over this way. So that's really the biggest challenge of the knife is, is that it's, it's really not much of a challenge at all. It's very easy to maintain that plane throughout the stroke just treating each section separately. When we do tanto blades, it's really the same procedure. You want to keep that geometry nice and crisp from the transition of planes on the tanto blade, and it's the same thing. Just one plane and then a second plane like that. And that's really all there is to it on this knife. Um, nothing complicated. It was a very easy, fun knife to sharpen. Uh, it's great steel, and uh, the edge just came out beautifully. It's a bit wide, uh, so it's, it's not going to be what they call hair popping sharp just because it's, it's a wide utility edge at 24 degrees per side. But uh, it's still shaving sharp and it's going to be slashing right through paper and everything else very easily. Um, but because it's a little bit wider, it'll be super durable for the kind of utility work that you would use it for. So that's really it. The, the Razel Knife by John Graham, sharpened on the Wicked Edge. And you can see it's just going, going to go right through the paper just very easily. So uh, very easy knife to sharpen, very easy to maintain, excellent quality fit and finish for the knife itself, and uh, a great fit for the Wicked Edge.